In this video, we're going to take a quick look at synthetic polymers, specifically the chain growth type. And basically, a polymer is just um, a large molecule made up of many repeating units um, of monomers. So in this case, here we have vinyl fluoride. And upon polymerization, you can see that we have many of these repeating units. Now, the alkene goes away. But you can see I've highlighted in red the different uh, vinyl chloride units that made up the polymer. These squiggly lines just say that this repeats um, and continues on the left and on the right. Now, in a lot of cases, this will just be abbreviated um, in a more condensed fashion. And the way you can do that is just by drawing your single monomer unit. So this would have been from the vinyl chloride. Now, of course, it doesn't have the double bond now. And then it makes a bond to the next unit and to the next unit. And then what you can do is put this in parentheses with an N to say this is a repeating unit. So this is a common way that you'll see polymers written. To show you how this polymerization takes place and what happens to the alkene, um, we're going to look briefly at the mechanism. Um, in this case, the initiator is hydrogen peroxide. So hydrogen peroxide, we've seen that before. That'll just break apart into two OH radicals. And that gets the process started. So the way that this would occur if you take, um, in this case, this is styrene, where we have the double bond with the phenyl group. What happens is this will get started by the OH adding to the double bond. So this is a radical addition. So remember, there's two electrons in that pi bond. One will pair up with the OH. The other will put a radical on the more substituted carbon here that has the phenyl attached. So we have that radical. Well now, just like before, we have a radical that can react with a second molecule, styrene. So there's a second one. So that radical will pair up with one electron in this bond. We'll put a single electron in the carbon containing the phenyl group. So now I'll put, just put the phenyl kind of up out of the way. We draw our new bond in red. And now we have another styrene unit added. its radical. And then this will continue, and it'll continue to add monomer units in until you have a large molecule containing many of these repeating units. We can just show this once more. Of course, this will happen hundreds or thousands of times. Now this radical will add to that pi bond, adding another unit. So again, I'll draw the new bond here in red. Now we've added another styrene unit, and that'll continue over and over again. Again, this is called a radical polymerization. Uh, this is most common when you have um, hydrocarbon alkenes, so like a phenyl group or maybe a methyl group or something like that. Um, and we use a radical initiator, and we have a radical intermediate in the mechanism. We can also have what's known as an anionic polymerization, and this is when there's an electron withdrawing group on the alkene. So that's typically something 
um, like a C double bond O or CM group. So basically you have your pi bond fragment that participates in the polymerization. And then when we have the CO pi bond or C triple bond in, that's considered an electron withdrawing group. These favor anionic polymerization, meaning our initiator is an anion, like a hydroxide, for example. So let's say you add that to this vinyl nitrile. Now this will have a preference. It'll attack this carbon and put the negative charge near the electron withdrawing group. And of course, just like we did before, this can add as a nucleophile to a second molecule and so forth. If we want to draw what the polymer unit would look like, what I would do, here's our vinyl cyanide. Basically, if you want to draw the polymer, erase the pi bond. Add a new bond to each carbon, parentheses, and an N. The opposite of anionic polymerization is cationic polymerization. This takes place if you have, instead of you know, a, um, a withdrawing group like a carbonyl or a nitrile, this is when you have an electron donating group. Don't think about it in terms of you know, the atom that is often electronegative. What we see, though, is that this atom has lone pairs. And lone pairs, we know, can donate to the double bond through resonance. So that's why nitrogen and oxygen, those are electron donating groups. In this case, your initiator is going to be some electrophile. Let's just keep it generic and say it's E+. So now, if we have this in the presence of an alkene, now what's going to happen, this reaction should be familiar, the double bond will react with the electrophile. And what we do, the electrophile goes to the less substituted carbon so that the carbocation can go to the side next to the hetero atom, like the nitrogen, where there's a lone pair which can help stabilize it through resonance. And then again, this process can continue with a second double bond. That can attack the carbocation. I'll put the NH2 up here out of the way. I'll draw our new bond in red. And there's that unit that was added. And that'll continue to happen until you get the polymer. We can draw like that. Now, if you do have to identify the monomer used to be a polymer, it can sometimes be just a little tricky because sometimes people will draw more than one repeating unit uh, within the framework. So what you want to do is just try to figure out where things repeat. So if we look here, we have CH2, and then we have a carbon with an isopropyl. Well, then you want to spot that this repeats right here with CH2 and another isopropyl. So when you think about breaking this down, you essentially want to cut it right here where the unit repeats and then right here where it starts. 
and then the part that we have between the red and the green carbon, that would be the double bond. So this is the monomer that would have been used to make that polymer. The last type we want to look at is, um, it's similar, but it's a ring opening polymerization, meaning during the process of the reaction, um, a small ring gets open. This is usually a three or four membered ring because they're more reactive and easier to open with a nucleophile. So here, hydroxy is our initiator, and then this epoxide that you'll recognize, it's a strained ring that actually wants to open up. So what happens, the hydroxide will attack this and break that open. So what we get from there Get our OH, I'll draw the new bond in red. We have the two carbons that were part of the epoxide. And then when that broke open, you got O minus. So that's a new nucleophile like you had here. So this can then react with a second epoxide. And that reacts with this epoxide. This will attack just like before and open it up. So there's our new bond. Then we have our two carbons. And then another O minus. And that can continue. Attack, open the epoxide. So in this case, what your unit would look like if you're going to draw the polymer Okay, here's the basic pieces that come from the epoxide, the two carbons and the oxygen. Here's where a new bond is formed. Here's where a new bond is formed. So then we take that, draw our parentheses, and put an end.